planned. <laughs> We'd survive this. Howdy y'all, it's Anna with Always Right and in today's author tube video, we are gonna be doing the NaNoWriMo survival kit tag. Woo, I finally got that out. <laughs> but if you ain't heard of this tag, hi, how are ya? I have found the original, and at least that's what the brackets say. That is from Wright Holly Davis. Uh, she's very cute, very fun. And this is a quick eight question tag about what you are gonna be using to survive nano and well, this video is like the what me is going to be using to survive nano. <laughs> anyway, so let's get into the questions. First question, what are you working on for NaNoWriMo this year? If you haven't seen my October in a day video, I did, I think like 10 days ago, two weeks ago, something like that. A uh, link will be in the description for that very chunky fun video. I never really named the project. I never really went into detail about the project. Uh, if you've watched any of my vlogs, you will know that I don't really go into detail about my projects because I want them to be like a surprise. I don't want you stealing my ideas, that's it. Mm, plain and simple. But I am calling this project Ashes to Ashes, which is actually one of the things I wanted to accomplish and I succeeded in accomplishing on my first novel, first draft, was having the word ashes be the first word in the book and ashes be the last word in the book. So it translated to ashes to ashes. That's what I'm calling my project. But basically it's kind of like a thriller fiction, contemporary fiction book. Of course, based on a story I heard out here in West Texas. So, you know, it's going to be nice and light. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh-huh. Question two, what apps do you use to help you write and stay motivated? So when I write, I generally don't even have my phone near me. It just, it's a distraction. It's a total distraction. What I have done back at the beginning of 2020, I deleted Facebook off of my phone. And then like last month, I just went through a purge of my apps on my phone, like apps that I wasn't playing, apps that had like notification things that I might click on because I'm bored and ooh, there's a number there. Ooh, it gotta mean something fancy's happening. Nothing fancy was ever happening because that's how they were trying to get my attention. They're like, please, you haven't opened this in like seven years. Why am I on your phone still? Just touch me. So I deleted about 50 apps off of my phone. <laughs> I have no regrets. It was totally worth it. I would do it all over again. Four apps that I think I may be using in Nano especially, I will be using the Photos app because I have some photos, I've created a little album, kind of as inspo for myself. And then of course the YouTube app so that I can watch some author tube videos and watch other people struggling just like I am because that's how I actually get motivated. And then there is Audible for when I'm outside watering, when I just need like a moment to myself. I have quite a few audiobooks on there as well as the Libby app, which I will hopefully not be using a lot of because I am really good at sinking time into Libby and just reading and getting distracted. <laughs> I'm gonna say it, Reddit. I'll say it. I don't think anyone, none, no one else that I've watched their tag for has said it, but Reddit is something that I will be using as a source to like boost my inspiration and other things and just kind of be like, ha ha, that's a stupid question. Ha <laughs> ha. I do that a lot too. I think that's it. Oh no, there is one more. And that's my podcast app on my phone because I do have a few podcasts that I really like listening to. The one that I got really into recently, I'm pulling it up one second. Can you see it? Can you see it? But it's called Shipping and Handling. Shipping and Handling is the podcast that I've been listening to a lot. It's two literary agents that are kind of talking about like the industry or they're addressing questions that their fans have submitted. And it's just really interesting. And it motivates me because I too want a literary agent to help me. That's it for question two. Quite a few apps, because going into this video, I was like, I don't use apps to write. <laughs> I do, I do. Oh my God, I do. Next question, where do you like to write and what's your favorite writing spot? So for my first book, and this is true for my first book, might not be true for this book that I'm writing. I sat in a location and I wrote, and that was the only location I sat in to write my book. Uh, however, I, I can already tell you that I'm gonna be up at the office with some construction workers repairing and renovating the office and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to have to learn how to write at my office, which 
sucks because I don't like writing at the office. I don't like going to the office that much. But my favorite location is in my breakfast nook and that's where all my like vlogs take place except for the Preptober vlog. I do plan on this nano writing a bit at my dining room table and not just my breakfast nook table. And kind of speaking of new writing locations, I am also gonna be doing some word sprints, hosting those to help y'all get through those fun days. I'll say it that way. And that will be at my editing computer here. I will have my little computer up, I'll be writing, and then I'll have the stream going from my editing computer where I actually have a decent camera and a decent setup for streaming. Question four, what are your writing space must-haves? Okay, this sounds a little weird because it's like a, that's not you have to have it, but it's a, I have to have like my table clean. For me, my writing space has to be totally clear. So I guess that's a must-have for my writing space is it has to be clean. I have to have my little dark gray tablecloth on it and then my computer, which I guess is kind of like a Duh, because that's how I'm writing my book. So that's kind of my writing space must have is just cleanliness. No distractions. That's a good one. I got to thinking and I do have one writing space must have and that's my little jacket. It's just a long crocheted jacket from Abercrombie & Fitch of all places that I bought back in college. I think my sophomore, junior year of college. And this has been with me ever since. And it's like my favorite thing. I also bought another jacket. She's not here right now, but it's so fuzzy. It's like a, it's like a smoking jacket. That's what it kind of reminds me of. It's like that soft, soft, fuzzy material. I love it. But this is one of my writing must haves is a jacket, preferably this one or I would settle for my new one. I guess a drink. It doesn't even have to be like a wine or anything. That would be like a bonus. Um, probably just like a small drink and then that's it. Number five, what are your favorite drinks and snacks to have when writing? I don't believe in food by the computer. As I, as I eat almost every meal, at my editing computer. I'm balanced, I have like three tables and a kitchen island and I sit at my desk to eat. <laughs> I don't know why I do it, I just do it. No, I don't like to snack while I write. It's very distracting for me. My writing is very much a, I sit down at the computer and the fingers go flying and that's how I write. <laughs> I write like I'm writing for a writing sprint. My writing style is writing sprints. So I always try to get higher numbers on my word per minute. So I don't really, eat a lot while I'm writing. I will usually have like a drink beside me and I don't know what that's gonna be this November because the weather is doing its little hula hoop dance or whatever here in Texas and it's like 95 today. Yeah, hi. Long sleeve, very heavy shirt, but it's worth it for the video. Uh, today was 95 and then on Friday it's gonna be like 45. I'm just sitting here and I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna be drinking. I don't know if it's gonna be tea, I don't know if it's gonna be coffee, if it's gonna be hot chocolate. Okay, just just to spitfire some drinks because I'm just gonna cover all my bases because of the Texas weather. Lemonade, but preferably like the pink one. It's from Simply Lemonade, it's really good. It has like raspberry with it and you can get it in like a gallon size, it's, it's nice. Uh, so pink lemonade, uh, water is also a good one. Whiskey sours, red wine, probably especially if it's gonna be cold teas, and I think I have quite a few coffees that I'm gonna be enjoying because my writing times are pretty sporadic throughout the day, so I can enjoy all sorts of goodies. <laughs> Wine in the morning, coffee at night, why not? It's nano, anything goes. Question six. What are your favorite writing distractions? YouTube <laughs> and my dog. I mean, of course, like it's like dog and then YouTube, but dog's still up here. Well, maybe family, dog, YouTube. Yeah, that's kind of probably the order that I should say because my family watches these. Family, that's y'all, hi. <laughs> dog and YouTube. Those are my three biggest distractions. Oh, and video games. They're about on par with YouTube. Um, so those are kind of my four, it keeps growing, my four distractions that I have and they're kind of my favorites. And video games can be very dangerous because I play video games where you can sink hours into the games. It's not just like uh, five minutes, 
Okay, I'm done for the day. It's just like, oh my gosh, I'm winning. I can win more. Yeah, I don't watch any TV. That's like one of the examples. She's like TV shows. And I'm like, we don't know those. We don't know her. <laughs> Girl, bye. Then number seven, what are your favorite ways to get back on track? My favorite ways are writing sprints. I love to just sit down and do writing sprints. Another thing is to read the previous paragraph. I try to limit it paragraph or two that I've written to make sure that I'm kind of in the spirit as well as outlining. If I am not producing words in my word sprints, I will step back for about five minutes, go stretch, go take my dog outside, and then I'll come back in and I will seriously just outline for an hour, take my dog back outside. She loves it when I can't write. What can I say? She gets to go outside a lot. And then come back in and write. And usually that helps me so much. Question eight. <laughs> Question eight, I can count. Oh my God. Question eight. What are your writing rewards and milestones? So my writing <laughs> rewards is that I get to drink my wine <laughs> once I have hit 15, 1600 words, and then I'll just keep going when I have my wine, as well as getting ready for bed, which sounds like that's, 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 a, that's a reward. Yes, it is. I love not having makeup on. I love pajamas. Don't try me. Don't like, I'm, I'm usually, I'm not cranky when I have makeup on, but when it reaches a certain hour and I still have my mascara on, I, that's all I'm thinking of. I'm just like, I wonder when I can just like get out of here and go wash it and <laughs> wash it off and just be natural and just not have a worry in the world. <laughs> but for my milestones, the biggest milestones for me are usually, of course, like kind of the intervals naturally. It's like every 10,000 words is huge. You can definitely see the progress then because you're like, oh my God, there was like, ah. Going from the 999 words to a thousand words, that's a huge milestone for me. I know that sounds kind of lame because that's literally like four pages, three pages um, of writing, but that's a pretty big milestone because you're going from three to four numbers in your word count. And then going from 9,999 words up to 10,000 words is pretty big. So you get to watch that growth. And then every other 10,000 word mark, 50K is a huge milestone for me. I remember when I first hit 45K and then 50K in my first book on the first draft. And I was just like, oh my gosh, it's happening. <laughs> So I guess that's, that's my answer, final answer. Thank you all so much for watching. And the last question is, who are you gonna tag? I tag you. I mean, it doesn't matter if you have a YouTube channel. You can do this tag yourself. Just get a piece of paper and kind of write down your answers to the questions and keep it somewhere where you can see it when you're writing for Nano. That will really help you. That'll help steady you, help kind of center you. I tag you. Whether you have a YouTube channel, AuthorTube channel, or you're just kind of chilling like a villain, you know, off on the side, like prepping, looking, taking notes, getting ready for Nano. I tag you, do it. Do it, just do it. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'm Anna with Always Write. I produce writing vlogs on Tuesdays as well as author two videos like this one here on Friday. So if that's your cup of tea, please click that like button. Maybe subscribe because you're down there. I won't tell anyone. As always, let's get writing.